G'day, it's Joe here, your mapping buddy, and I am so excited. As you'll know by now, Dungeons and Dragons has been released on PDF. Now we're not talking about modern Dungeons and Dragons, we're talking about old school Dungeons and Dragons. Now for me, that's just incredible because it takes me back, it just teleports me back to those great old days of being in high school where you know we'd scupper off to the lunchroom, uh, set up a D&D table and play for 15, 20, 30 minutes every day, primarily to escape the, the, the evil clutches of the bullies. Just kidding, I was the coolest kid in the school because I was the dungeon master. Like, awesome. Anyway, one of the great things about old school D&D are those, those quirky blue maps that they used to have. Now, these were created in the days before computers, primarily, and they were just, you know, they were just works of art. They were just masterful. And you could never play a game of Dungeons and Dragons without getting out your grid paper and doing your mapping. And I like to capture that type of mapping experience, but using new age mapping tools like Campaign Cartographer and Photoshop. So what they've got online here, as you can see, is the D&D Expert book. Oh my god! Um, you've got the, uh, the basic rule book, uh, you've got High Space. Uh, that's actually not really a D&D product, that's a plug for our own product, High Space. It's now nearly two months in the top ten, number one spot for about a month and a half. Awesome game, science fiction, nothing to do with D&D. I had to plug it. Um, but you've got all these other wonderful adventures coming up for, um, for Dungeons and Dragons. You've got Keep on the Borderlands, um, and uh, just, uh, oh, the Temple of Elemental Evil. Classic, classic. Just, just look at this stuff. It's just so, so beautiful. Um, though, to celebrate all these, these beautiful blue maps, and I just would like to be able to zip through and create a map like that in about 10 minutes. But to do that, I'm going to need the mapping tools. Now, Campaign Cartographer comes with a heap of really beautiful dungeon mapping tools, but not really ones which are as, shall we say, um, grandfatherly and take you, you know, port you back in time to that old school style mapping. Um, so, I'm going to show you how to create a style or a, a style set, an entire environment where you can create your own blue dungeons, your own old school Dungeons and Dragons maps in very, very little time. And to do that we're going to uh, create a drawing style and we're also going to create some symbols. So this is going to be a very different type of mapping tutorial. It's going to be not showing you how to quickly create a map, but how to create the tools that let you create a map. So let's get right to it. Right, so the first thing that we're going to do is create a symbol catalog. Now, if you just do a quick search in Google, you'll see that there is plenty of examples of really nice old school Dungeons and Dragons images online. And I'm going to show you how to create these for your own maps. Now, the reason I'm showing you how to create your own symbols is one, creating symbols catalogs really speeds up mapping in the long run, but two, it's very likely that you're going to want symbols for your own maps that are very reminiscent of old school, but, but you know, are, are just for your maps. So having some basics about how to create symbols is really important. The rest of this tutorial is going to be about creating old school mapping symbols. So I'm just going to minimize this now, and let's open up Campaign Cartographer and get straight to work. To create symbols, what you need to do is start by clicking on, obviously, a new project and then click on Symbol Catalogs, down here. Click on Next. Decide Settings by itself is fine. Uh, just go for Blank Dungeon Catalog. Now, if you don't see this, don't worry. There are uh, plenty of other ways of opening up a blank um, catalog environment, but uh, I find that Blank Dungeon Catalog is, is pretty good. Click on Next. Just leave everything else absolutely the same. You might want to put in your copyright notice if you want. In this case, it's Joe Sweeney from Storyweaver. Click on Finish. There we go. And I'm going to give this a new name. Now, I'm going to call this Old School Tutorial. Great. Now we've got a big blank screen. What I'm going to get you to do is zoom out a bit. So if we click here, you can see that we can zoom out. And you'll start to see very, very faintly the grid coming in. Now the grid's going to be incredibly important for creating our mapping symbols. The old school D&D maps were always produced on 5 foot and 10 foot grids. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we've got a 5 foot grid set here. 
Uh, now, if you click on down here, grid, you'll see that we've currently got it set as a 10 foot grid with two snaps. I'd like to set it to a 5 foot grid, but I don't want one snap. I have a lot of control over where things are positioned within each 5 foot space. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go edit, and you can see here that we've got the name of the grid, 5 foot grids, one snap, spacing is 5 foot. I'm going to have this so that I've got 24 snap divisions. So if I click on OK, oops, I forgot I should change that name. There's 24 snaps in that. Click on OK and OK. Great, now you can see that the grid is smaller and that our snapping is a lot finer. Now I'm going to create four symbols for you today and each symbol will demonstrate a different feature of symbol mapping. Don't worry, this will become clear. I'm going to create a door. That's a standard wall cutting door. You drop it down onto a wall and it cuts the wall and you're all good. A false door. That's going to be a symbol which aligns to a wall but doesn't cut the wall. A key. And that's a little symbol that you can use to represent a locked door. Or a door which has got a puzzle on it that needs to be, uh, needs to be solved. And that will definitely align with the walls but it'll allow you to bring the key a little bit further away from the wall. And then finally, I'm going to produce a spiral, a, a, bleh, a spiral staircase. You see, I'm getting too excited already. So, let's start with a door. Well, our basic door is going to be white. And we're going to make it one, two. There we go. We're going to make it quite a large door. So you can see I've drawn my rectangle. Now, unfortunately, what I forgot is that I had hollow switched on. So let's, let's go to hollow, and let's make that solid so that our settings now will be solid in future. And then let's go and modify this, do it, and make this solid, fill style solid. And you can see we can actually update that. So that's fantastic. So here's the start of a nice big double door I'm going to be working on. It's not quite right yet. I want to get some, some I want to give it some detail. So I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to change it to black and then I'm going to change the width to 3 inches. I like to use real world world measures as much as possible when uh, creating symbols because it makes them very easy to uh, think about in terms of real world units when you're designing for a map that you're not actually working on. So how wide is a double door? In this case, you've got these five foot increments here, so this is almost a 10 foot wide door. It's pretty big. So we've got real width of three for our detail, and I'm going to click on the path tool. I'm going to start in the middle here, so it'll join up neatly. We won't get any raggedy corners. Perfect. Now, because it's a doorway and it's a double door, I'm going to put a nice line through the middle of it, showing that it's a double door. I'd also like to show which way the door opens. So this is going to be a slight modification on what you normally see on doorways in um, Dungeons and Dragons. So what we'll do for that is I'm going to make this even smaller. I'm just going to make it one inch. And I'm going to draw an arc. Now there's a couple of ways of drawing arcs. So what I want to do is draw an arc across here. Now when you go to draw the arc tool here, you've got a couple of options. Start, end and bulge and so forth. What I want is center, start and end. And this will become apparent. I'm going to have my center line just square off the door. I'm going to draw to about the same distance from the other side. Click and then draw out. Perfect. Now let's put a little arrowhead on it. I'm going to use a path. End. Go, that'll do. Okay, so there's our which way the door opens arrow. Now I'm going to copy this rather than trying to reproduce it all. Copy it over to here. And here's a great little tool. So that was the copy tool there. I'm going to type down in here mirror. Then asks me to select the items that I want mirrored. So I select all of those ones. I go do it. And then I draw the angle for the mirroring. Almost done. We now have to move it into place. Perfect. So now if we just refresh that, 
you can now see that we've got a fantastic double door. Now it's really that simple. That's how you create a double door. Now this one we're going to make a bit later as a cutting symbol, meaning when we put this on a wall it will go smack in the middle of the wall and it will cut the wall. So that's our first symbol. Let's scroll down now to another 10 foot area and create a false door. So again we're going to start with a white background and we'll imagine in this case that the wall is running along this grid line here. So what I'm going to do is I don't want this to be nearly as big as a double door so we'll start about halfway through Now, again, it's just put the line in. Why is that? It's really simple, actually. It's because we've got our width set to 1. So, again, we can just click on this, which is Change Entity. Click on the Entity to Change. It's got one selected. Right-click and go Do It. And then we can say, I want that to be a line width of nothing. Zero. Zilch. Zip. Done. Change our color to black. And let's just draw a box around that. There we go. There's our false wall. And I've just noticed it's not quite on the right spot, so I'm just gonna whoops. I'm just gonna move all of that down so it, it's perfectly aligned. There we go. Lovely. Okay, what's next? Ah, the key. So a key for mapping. Now in this case we are just going to keep with the um, one inch. In fact, I might up that to two inches. And what I'll do is I'm going to draw, first of all, in the middle of my five foot area, and then I'm going to come down. There's the base of the key, shaft of the key, and of course, being a key, it's got little. That looks like a key to you? Yeah, it looks like a key to me. Now, the next, the, the very last one that we're going to work on is, we'll put it over here, is a staircase. Now, the staircase is going to be a 10 foot wide square spiral staircase. So, we're going to want to set our line width to zero because we're just wanting a big box. We're going to set this to white, which will be our background. I'm going to have it fill an entire perfectly 10 foot area. So, when we drop it on the map, it will fill the full 10 foot areas. Let's take our lines back up to 3 inches, change our color to black, and what we're going to do now is draw the bounding box, draw a mask line that way, a mask line that way, and then we're going to draw our step lines. Now I'm going to change this down to say two inches to make it a little bit smaller for the steps. This is modeled very much on seriously old school dungeons. Now rather than drawing each line one at a time, which I could do by being very methodical, I'm going one line, then the next line, then the next line, that can get painful. So I'm going to use the copy command. I'm actually going to copy both of those lines that I've drawn, because that'll halve the time, and just start stamping them down. Look at that. Saves a couple of mouse clicks. I tell you what, in mapping, a couple of mouse clicks saved is awesome. There you go. Now, for the rest of the steps, they require crosshatch lines like this. That's it. That's a symbol for, oops, one of those lines is not quite right. There we go. Accuracy pays off. So, that's our staircase. Fantastic.